वेलकम बैक टू दिस रियली स्पेशल एपिसोड ऑफ पैसा वैसा द फैमिली ऑफिस स्पेशल माय गेस्ट राजमोहन कृष्णन प्रिंसिपल फाउंडर एंड मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर एंड ट्रस्ट फैमिली ऑफिस द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द एपिसोड वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट बेसिक्स व्हाट डज अ फैमिली ऑफिस डू एंड द रियली रिच विंटेज दैट एंड ट्रस्ट फैमिली ऑफिस हैज इन दे वर अमंग द फर्स्ट पीपल ऑन इन द इंडस्ट्री दे हैव बीन फाउंडेड बाय वेटरन्स फ्रॉम द प्राइवेट वेबसाइट सो राज वेलकम बैक नाउ आई वांट यू टू गिव आवर लिसनर्स uh you know a little bit more specific a little bit more clear ideas about the kind of services that you offer let's say that i'm a client <laughs> i let's say that i'm someone who's made a lot of money selling my startup or actually you know what maybe a very successful sme and i come to you for the for the very first time can you walk us through the process to get things started to get our engagement started what do you what, what are the kind of questions that you would ask me before we start our engagement and you know just so that our listeners can get an idea go on yeah so what we do is uh, when a client approaches or we when we approach a client through some reference or something like that we speak to the client we understand what is that he is expecting an advisor to sure. do so principally uh, we would like to understand from him saying that what whether where this money is come from uh, what is the kind of uh, what do you say business uh, was he into Uh, what he intends doing after this like he's made an exit whether he wants to continue doing something or he wants to just retire and keep managing this money uh, so it's very very important to have a very intense discussion with the client now the, uh, the this discussion is is even a prelude to what we present we are going to present to him about interest and once we we are completely aware about what he is going to do what is the kind of money he's got what he thinks about Uh, uh what do you say is money has to do and his family background his professional background uh, where is he coming from what everything so it's a very intense kind of a discussion which we have and after that uh, we present entrance to him we present meaning we present our credentials to him what we have done for clients and 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 uh, across uh, uh, the spectrum in terms of whether it's investments whether it could be non investments so we take them through with kind of a, some of the live examples what we have done and make him understand saying that this is our capabilities now once uh, uh, the the uh, pitch is over meaning we talk about our, talk about us introduce the team members and each of them uh, come with their expertise and all of them like for example family office uh, is you can't have rookies in family office you have you need to have veterans in family office so basically our interest uh, the, the kind of team what we have is Every, most of them are more than about 20 25 years kind of an experience in the industry so they've all put in long years they have they've seen uh, if you look at investment they've seen cycles market cycles they understand how the markets behave uh, uh, if the market is uh, kind of a crashing what needs to be done whether you need to be worried or they need to be stable uh, or if the market is just going up like what have happened uh, in the last about 2 3 months how do you react to situations so all this uh, is something which is very important so we give a lot of importance to vintage so we showcase that vintage to clients and we say saying that hey this is what is our kind of a team uh, which comprises of and uh, that that gives them a lot of confidence saying that yes these guys are uh, really seasoned professionals whom we are talking about and then if he decides to engage with us uh, the next is we say saying that if he has got an existing portfolio we try to take the portfolio uh and and do a kind of an assessment of the portfolio it's called something called spot portfolio mm-hmm. audit uh, we study the portfolio and we find saying that how the portfolio has uh, performed over over last period of time and what is the kind of risk he has taken what is the kind of cost he has incurred to manage the portfolio and and uh, uh, what is the kind of uh, what is the time frame the portfolio has lasted meaning uh, people have just gone go live left right and center and invested in products which are 5 7 9 years 10 years 12 years um we understand saying that how far these guys have locked in uh, uh, into some of these investments so this is very very important to understand how the client has reacted uh, uh, in his investments and uh, study about study the portfolio and present it to him saying that show the mirror saying that hey this is how the portfolio has performed uh, this is the weaknesses this is the strength of the portfolio what you have and also give them a view saying that if we have done how we would have managed this portfolio okay so that is on the investment side and also try and understand from him saying that whether he is real estate heavy uh, whether uh, what do you say what is the kind of 
uh, that is he has already invested in some startups or he's thinking of investing in some kind of a startups and uh, what he intends doing like for example he's got some idea of investing into some uh, what do you say contributing something to the society does he does he want to probably allocate some money into yeah. philanthropy uh, uh, or if he wants to do some kind of a social investing uh, whether he's got a trust uh, whether it's a charitable trust or a private trust all that is goes with okay. the discussion so once the discussion is complete it it can run into one meeting to about 5 6 7 meetings okay and because it's a very very long term relationship so it can't be done there's no cookie cookie cutter method in this okay so we don't shortcut this and we we tell the clients in that don't be in a hurry don't be uh, expecting everything to happen overnight because we don't want to jump the gun okay we want to understand thoroughly about you about your family about your uh, investment thesis about your philosophies Uh, everything is very very important so i have to ask you this uh, raj because you you know you would have seen the portfolios of all these people what are maybe you know maybe a few random examples of stuff that really surprised you i mean uh, the impression that we have and if i go just by rbi data then we know that india primarily is obsessed with this whole financial uh, versus physical asset thing so real estate heavy gold heavy is that also generally the trend that you've seen in the people that you advise i mean you know just on an average See, actually, it depends on the uh, it depends on uh, the type of clients. Like there are two, three types of clients are there. Okay, one is uh, first generation entrepreneurs, or maybe uh, I would say the second generation entrepreneurs. Okay, the first generation may be about sixty. Second generation could be about twenty five, thirty kind of a thing. And there are family businesses where uh, people are third generation, fourth generation, or father, grandfather would have started and they've inherited. wherever there is uh, what do you say family businesses are involved they are all neck deep wow. in real estate actually huh neck deep in real estate yes 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 like they continue investing in real estate uh, sometimes you don't even understand in that why they are investing <laughs> okay. in real estate okay uh, what is what is that so fascinating about real estate uh, which which they keep investing in like for example and when you say more, Real estate, you'll be like maybe they've bought tracts of agri land. Maybe they've bought no, no, all kinds of agri- stuff. No, it, huh? it could be anything, random stuff. They could be commercial. They could be residential plots. Ah. They could be houses. They could be villas. They could be commercial properties. Wow. They just what do you say? Whenever there is some money, they are ah. also saying that hey, why why don't I put uh, this money into real estate? Uh, I keep uh, we keep we can't we keep on telling people saying that hey, it's not listed. Okay, <laughs> real estate is not listed. You don't even know saying that whether your money is appreciating or depreciating. And I'm guessing a blended yield on that entire real estate piece would be what two percent, four percent, seven percent, depending on what. It's very, it's 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 not easy to say, but see, there are uh, a lot of things. Like for example, you have, uh, you have real estate is completely illiquid. The mm. the day you want to sell, you'll never be able to sell. Okay, and yeah. the number one, number two is it's extremely complicated in terms of not only paperwork in India, even today the registration process. Uh, there is it's not clean, it's not above board, so you'll have to still. Uh, what do you say? Handle uh, the 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 what do you say? The dirty part of it. Okay, oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. so typically uh, it's not a very easy kind of a thing when you when when somebody wants to handle real estate. Number one, number two is is very difficult to manage because you have multiple real estate. And tomorrow, like typically your sons today, most of the younger generation are going abroad. Okay, and they want to study there. They want to build a career there, and they are not going to come back and manage your your real estate. Okay, and they don't want to be going behind and collecting rents and talking to uh, various people and and fighting out the legal issues. Uh, uh, what do you say? Going to the court and getting it solved and all that. Nobody is interested. So somehow, uh, what do you say? The fascination of real estate at times you are you are you are surprised and you are very shocked also to hear. Okay, yeah. but that's not the case with your first generation or maybe the second generation families. Uh, most of them. Uh, have got real estate, but very very selective. Like typically, they would buy one or two houses max in terms of their uh, what do you say to live in, uh, and uh, uh, and maybe like one international property if they are, if they have some international interest, the kids might be abroad or something like that. Or at the most, only that much. Meaning they 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 don't want to invest in real estate and keep managing this uh, kind of affairs. And and most of them are want to be in, li- in liquid assets. Like typically, it could be a financial asset. uh and and even gold for example uh, they want to invest in etfs and not just buy physical gold and keep storing it in your 
bank lockers. Sure. That's not the idea uh, with the first and second generation entrepreneurs. Sure. So now, uh, you know, last two questions on on this episode. So I want to start with diversification, right? Um, in terms of financial products only now, because we've spoken enough about real estate. I think we've got a fair enough idea about gold also. What are the kinds of financial products do you re- do you recommend to family offices? Of course, keeping in mind that each one, as you said, and I, and and you've emphasized throughout, is very unique, is very different, and therefore what works one might not work for the other. But in general, you know, if I am talking about stuff like investing in startups or maybe international in investing, in general, what are the financial products that you advise to these clients to that you recommend to them? See, uh, when it comes to asset classes, okay, there are only four major asset classes which is available. One is equity. The second one is fixed income. The third one is commodities. And the fourth one is real estate. Okay. So these are the four asset classes which is available. Though people say art is an asset class, but it's a very, very, what do you say? It's a lifestyle oriented asset class. People are not, uh, uh, what do you say? Not everybody is interested in art. Not everybody will understand art. So you will have to obviously diversify amongst this, whether it's domestic or international. Okay. You'll have to view it only this way. Okay. Now, and when you when you dissect equity, then again you will have to you have mutual funds. Uh, you could have uh, stock investments. Now in the stock investments, you could probably invest in PMSs, or you can invest in alternate investment funds, uh, or <clears throat> you can get into something like a, a, a kind of a long shot. Uh, uh, but all this is part of equity, meaning sure. it's like it's a. It's, it's a subset of equity. Okay, so you can you can have in any form like hedge fund or something like that. It's all of equity. Okay, now obviously your all this uh, anything which is very fancy and which is very difficult to understand, we allocate very minimum into it. So which okay. whatever product which you can't understand, which anybody layman can can't understand, we obviously we will not just go cart loads into it. We will we will have minimum kind of an investment. Even if somebody is insisting, saying that I want to diversify. So that that puts you into only one, two, uh, three asset classes. Like equity, equity meaning stock investments. It could be through mutual funds or uh, what do you say? Uh, your uh, your uh, so direct stocks, which is could, sure. could be through PMSs or AFs. And uh, your fixed income, fixed income will be majority. It could be through bonds or, or mutual funds. Um, these are the th- two areas where you will invest. Uh, there are other products which just come in, like for example, off late, you have a high risk debt. Uh, it's a category which is which is uh, got, got momentum. Where uh, like uh, st- um, what do you say, mezzanine debt for investing into startups, investing into real estate, uh, which is which is called mess debt, uh, which is again come in, which is carries though it's called debt, it's got equity risk, uh, huge kind of a risk which is available. So we would not classify that as debt. Uh, so the, all these uh, investments will be very, very minimal in terms of probably our allocation. Uh, but And again, it depends on the client. The client says, if he says saying that, hey, I don't want asset allocation. I want all my money in equity. I want all my money in risky products. Uh, we will go to, we will actually administer the client into a risk profiler and show the mirror saying that, hey, this is what the risk profiler says. Do you want to follow this or do you want to probably have your own thought process? There are a lot of people, majority of them follow that risk profiler. Some people say, saying that, hey, chuck the risk profiler, just listen to what I say. I want all my money to be in equities. I've got enough real estate to take care of my fixed income portion. Just put money into equities. Then we go by them. Uh, we go by the recommendation and then diversify into investments. So that's the kind of diversity. That, yeah, of course, international also is fallen to the same category because today, if you look at post COVID, uh, uh, post uh, 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 what do you say? Uh, the the kind of a great financial crisis. Uh, what has happened is people have started diversifying investments into international investing. But of course, you have only LRS as a vehicle, uh, which is two two fifty thousand uh, dollars, which is possible maximum uh, by a single individual for a year. And this money has to be uh, what do you say uh, uh, transferred uh, to an international account and invested from there. But again, when the money goes there, it has to be invested into only these kind of opportunities. But again, international is a, goal, is a, is a kind of a landmine. It's not easy to manage. It's not just like your domestic investments. Uh, it has got its own vagaries. Uh, you have dollar to be worried about because 
the dollar fluctuation can affect your international returns so there is enough complications in international so we will be extremely careful in terms of assessing somebody's somebody's risk profile before even we suggesting what needs to be done understood so raj i want to wrap up this episode today if uh, for our listeners with just a very simple question out here if you know maybe some of our listeners out there are actually going out and choosing family offices and um what would be your checklist right i mean or what would be maybe the three or four or five questions that you think that you should definitely ask a family office before signing them up just let's wrap up on on this note of very specific advice maybe a checklist no uh, one is uh, the most important thing is what does money mean to them how do they want to manage money okay there there could be customers who want to be extremely conservative they're saying you need to be conservative and protect my wealth or it's a growth capital i want to grow my capital like like somebody has got 100 crores and they say saying that i'm very much fine if suppose the uh, it, it beats the inflation by about 1 or 2% there could be clients who will say saying that i have a target of 3 years for the 100 to become 200 mm-hmm. no these are different clients and their different thought process so we need to understand uh, before even we sign up if suppose somebody says i want 100 to become 200 in 3 years then we will maybe stay away we will not probably take that account and we will say saying that we are not into the race interesting so you're putting this back on the client saying that the client needs to introspect first and you know figure out his needs and say that okay i'm coming to you with this aum could be you know whatever 5 10 50 100 crores and my objectives are let's say 1 2 3 preservation of capital could be the first one very first one yes. that is primary uh, i i cannot take even a 1 rupee loss okay correct, that, correct. so i let's say that i start with that that for me preservation of of capital is important maybe i am you know someone in my uh, mid 40s or late 40s and i'm looking at really setting aside a fairly large corpus over a well, you know, maybe 20 25 year uh, time frame because you know let's say that i am 40 or 45 and by the time i'm 60 65 or 70 i want my corpus to grow at a reasonable rate so first preservation of capital uh, second uh, beat inflation like you said just beat inflation for me by 1 2% um and third priority could be you know i don't just help me out maybe uh, trust liquidity yeah liquidity there you go that i don't want to get stuck into stuff that's easy to that's difficult to liquidate so if 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 i give you these three if these are my three priorities okay what do you think should be the questions i should be asking my family office for the capabilities that they have let's make this a little bit more specific if that makes sense to you you know capabilities is basically you need to understand saying that who are the people behind ah okay that's very important okay now the second question is if you ask me i will ask a family office are you funded wow very interesting so when you say funded what do you mean by that if what's your balance private, sheet if a private equity guy has invested into a family office ah i would like to stay away from that i'll tell you why i've okay. got a reason and i gave you this reason the first uh, is in the first yeah, yeah i i remember that and i'm glad that you're expanding on this yeah go on sorry you know what happens when somebody takes money from public or private equity guys or anybody for that matter why does i invest into a company for me to make returns mm-hmm. and and in reasonable time mm-hmm. so i will not wait for 25 years to make returns i will obviously want to make returns in 5 7 9 years that yeah. means i am looking at an exit and where yes, this that's... exit is going to come this exit is going to come i uh, and and what will i base my investment decision on my investment decision is based on ebitda my investment decision is based on the kind of assets the kind of revenue a family office doesn't work that way. it doesn't produce wow. revenue the way you want to because it's a long term trust oriented business i will wow. from day one i will not put my foot down and say if you pay me so much i will do business i yeah, first of all a client needs to understand me the client needs to trust me though people he would have taken reference he would have done this he would have heard uh, uh, whatever here and say like typically i'll i'll, gi- I'll give you an example if suppose yeah. tomorrow uh, somebody comes to you um, uh, and say you are constructing a house you go you you say say that kindly refer to my refer me to a good uh, architect and a contractor somebody refers to you two people okay you will you will take some references you will call the uh, references and you will find out saying that how your experience has been but don't you think you will start gaining trust the when you saw them working with you the first 6 months is when 
you understand saying hey these guys are time conscious they do their work properly they execute to perfection in terms of whatever i have told they don't deviate much and they're putting good quality materials all this is done over a period of time so basically a family office will get trust the client will get trust to the family office it will take 2 to 3 years or even 4 years time wow and and so, before that you can't be asking saying that hey you come with me why don't you increase my fees why don't you pay me more money that's not the way this business works so how will it work in an excel sheet it is like all the startups do they say saying that a hey, first year 15% next year 25% next year 30% i don't think this business works that way so my first question i will ask as an investor to a family of saying that hey what is your background how many clients do you manage who are the people behind what is the type of clients you have and whether you have funded are you funded okay what is the long term proposition what if you sell off to somebody saying that i am investing because i know that you are there tomorrow what is the guarantee that you are going to be there what is the success it's very interesting who is going to take who is who is going to take forward this business from you tomorrow if suppose you exit you give it to somebody whom i don't like at all an organization you're right right because i i face this with my relationship manager at my bank who changes every year yaar i mean i can't you're right no, you're, you're 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 absolutely right about this so the, 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 you know this is something that's totally counterintuitive probably because we don't you know understand from your perspective uh, so i'm guessing raj that if i come to you and i ask and i start asking you things like okay, what kind of return can you give to me that's my first question would yeah. that kind of piss you off i would not say piss me off it's a, as an investor <laughs> you are you are right in asking that question uh, uh, no, but, but as a starting say, point as a starting point if somebody is asking really it will it will then <laughs> i will know saying that he is not understood what is a family office uh-huh. yes 100% wow then that, that, is, that means know, that he is looking for an investment advisor or a wealth manager wow yeah so let me just wrap you know let, let me just recount this and just add add your points here raj okay so first question is what is your background you know what is the vintage what is the caliber what is your pedigree the kind of people who are running this you know where have you guys come from that should probably be my first thing of course after figuring out about the private equity part that you just said second is how do you you know how will you handle my money or what is your succession plan if tomorrow if someone from your office leaves and who will take over and whether i will get along so i think that would be second any other thing that you want to add out here just off top of your mind no i'm basically saying that what are your what are your capabilities like mm. uh, i would i would i would want to know some of some six to seven instances where you have managed different uh, what do you say uh, uh, life situations like for example if you say real estate what are the different real estate deals have you done uh, uh, if you say uh, i'm 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 good in uh, we're setting up private trusts what is the kind of private trust you have done uh, and and what is the different complicated uh, what do you say situations have you come across and if you say saying that i've done taxation or i've done accounting uh, what is the capability like wh- why do you think that you are better than my child accountant these are some of the issues which i would want to know uh, uh, like if i say private equity understand from them saying that what is your philosophy uh, uh, where do you invest in terms of private equity what is your contribution maybe talk to some of the clients uh, whom uh, uh, who who has invested and probably get a kind of a reference to understand uh, Uh, and and very very important is succession meaning tomorrow if somebody is not there who is going to manage it it's yeah, a, it's like wedding yeah. right like i i get married to you and i want my son to be managed i introduce everything i'm i'm stripping naked in front of you and tomorrow <laughs> if you just go and do something with somebody else and you give off your company to somebody else and walk away what happens wow that's a big one that is a big no you you're right and, i mean you know if 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 i have founded my business only for the purpose of selling it off after 10 years then yeah you're right you're right you're absolutely right go on and yeah, absolutely absolutely and and family office why should you grow beyond a point yeah. because see i'll tell you something if you're if you're giving great service for a family you can't do this for 100 people you mm. can't logically in, no you're right you're right you're right impossible yeah. impossible to do it i can bet it and that's what makes a client sticky with you right i mean you're absolutely. literally holding him through his lifetime i mean i'm sure and help me out here you would even probably get queries at my kid wants to do his undergrad in in the us can you give me a good college do you get queries like that absolutely education wow. education <laughs> mentoring <laughs> business opportunities yeah. uh, everything for the matter uh, from a t- very very trivial issue to probably something as complicated as anything 
we get we, a, we keep getting uh, what do you say uh, queries as a merger or an acquisition or some yeah, expansion yeah yeah amazing yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that is, you know, that's this brings it really personal, you know. Maybe so, like, and you just gave the anecdote, right? In a in the first half of someone actually coming to you and saying that we want to get our kid married, can you help us? I mean, what? How more personal can it get? Yeah, My kid absolutely. wants to go to US, help us. My kid wants to get married, help us. Now that is a kind of relationship. I think that is very unique. That I don't think your typical, you know. Investment bank or a wealth bank you know, or a wealth manager can handle. Fantastic, Raj. This and, is and, and most important is uh, family office is all about empathy. It is not about your financial brilliance. There are 150 fund managers out there who are brilliant, but do you want to deal with all of them? You want to deal with a very empathetic person who will understand wow. the family. Who will understand? That's the most important thing about family office. It's I don't about, get this. I don't get this on my show at all. Here, my show people are just talking about rate of returns beating in in. In inflation, where is the sense of it? But you've hit the nail on the head. Empathy. Can It's you be important. in my shoes and I and understand what I'm going through? Is that what you're talking about? I, absolutely. Wow. And everything is summed summed up in that, right? Like, for example, I'm in the investor's shoes. I will know exactly what is it, what does he want, and he'll work on on his behalf to get his returns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So empathy is sums it up everything because it's a, that's the most important characteristic of a family office. Yeah, I'm just I'm just amazed because you know the average guest on my show, or the average issue, sorry, not guest, the average guest on my show is more the average issue on my show is more towards the retail audience. But what you're saying as a concept applies to a retail investor also. Can okay. my advisor understand where I'm coming from, or is his motive in life only about getting all my money? You know, putting it into some schemes here and there, giving me some kind of return, and that's it. You know, after five years, six years, seven years, he's he's gone. Whereas what I should be looking at, okay, and I'm taking this yeah. idea from you, Raj. There is a long term relationship over five, ten, fifteen, twenty years, watching me grow in my life and being next to me, helping me through these decisions. Would I be right yes. in saying this? Absolutely, you're you're hit the nail. Actually, that's the right thing. Actually. If That's investment right. advisors can, you know, be in these shoes, I can tell you the quality of advice that we get in India would be significantly different. And I'm saying this in general, you know, because I'm pretty sure that what applies at a concept level, by the way, not at an execution level, at a concept level for, uh, you know, someone who's got a hundred crore portfolio versus someone who's got maybe even a one lakh portfolio is the same. I mean, empathy, uh, probity, uh, honesty, sincerity, and being there for your client over the long term. But and and you know something, I always believe that, uh, like for example, the regulators have. Lot of exams to qualify for you to advise. I really feel there should be a there should be a, a kind of a, a qualifying factor for the software issues also. Uh, it's But hard to capture that, right? Thing. No, but you have to find a way to capture it because I I believe that that's the most important thing because otherwise you'll 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 end up probably spoiling the client completely, yeah. and you Imagine have that, no? satisfied investors only because of that. Yeah. I mean, when I when I take a step back and think about it, if all the professionals in a life, so maybe a doctor, a lawyer, uh, my trainer, you know, who comes, uh, 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 the trainer at the gym, if all of them could be this involved and this, and have this level of empathy, I think lives could it is, change. It is very important. I completely with you. Every time when I deal with a contractor, and with anybody for that matter, whether it's a doctor, like the minute you go to a doctor, he will say. Uh, he will not even hesitate. He will say, "I think surgery is the only solution." <laughs> I hear you. I've done, been there, done that. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, and, and and believe me, I'm telling you, it is for him. He has to achieve his uh, number of surgeries target. Yeah, yeah, I. I hear you. Yeah, you know, I I've, I yearn for that uh, doctor who can at least sit me down and give me just five minutes of his time, rather than just you know make a list of whatever prescription is there and just shoot shoot me away. I get what you're saying, man. This discussion can go on and on. on But I, and thank on. you so much. Yeah, I yeah, know. Thank you so much. I hope you know. Maybe hope to have you back. Maybe after after a while, uh, and maybe we can discuss more about the you know the role of empathy in investment advice. Love that as a topic. So, folks. That is a wrap on this episode of Pesa Pesa. Very unique, very different episode. My guest Raj Mohan Krishnan, principal founder and managing director at Entrust Family Office. Guys, check out. Do please check out the website. Uh, there's a lot of material out there. Uh, there's some links to some very interesting articles. There's of course the team, the team profile also. And it's always good to have veterans on the show because these are people who've seen, like Raj was saying, cycles over long periods of time. So, like I said, uh, the firm's name is Entrust Family Office. My guest, Raj Mohan Krishnan, Principal Founder and Managing Director. Raj, thank you so much for doing this for our listeners. Thank you, Anupam. It has been a wonderful kind of a discussion. What I had, 
I really enjoyed, actually, thoroughly enjoyed this kind of a discussion. It gave me an opportunity to uh, actually share my thoughts, uh, my my kind of an ideas of what what is family office is all about, and what one needs to even explore uh, uh, when when they are looking for a family office advice. Thank you. Hey, it's hey, it's great to have a you know someone on on the show who's deeply passionate about his topic, about his business, and who takes his business to be actually a part of his life. So, Raj, thank you so much.